represents the region of APAC at BlizzCon at the first ever MDI at BlizzCon. Who is going to take it? Clars, a pleasure to join you here on this Halls of Valor, this trip as we're going into it. <laughs> Big thing we're always watching is you know how they kind of pace themselves in terms of the tanks going into these larger pools. I like being able to see that quick stop out of Skylark, seeing if there's any explosives, taking care of them very quickly. But also, once he achieves aggro, once he gets threat, he immediately just takes off and starts moving in the direction of Himdal. I really like the positioning here, as opposed to Brath, who's actually just running back to the start of the instance and kind of dragging everybody away from him. Yeah, I like that too. Just kind of small things evening out, especially when you're going up against this kind of pack as well. Actually having less bodies near this huge pack is actually a boon to you, especially if it's melee members being taken away from it. Because there's sometimes those circles that, you know, if you're in re melee range, then you can actually have a bit of a problem. But one of the Windwalk Monks already goes down. They're going to be very fragile in this instance. Yeah, and always important to always watch out for the CDs and all the other AoE breaths that are coming out, yeah. of course, from the Storm Drake. The positioning can be extremely important as we're going into this. Also important to note, uh, for Himdal, you're only going to have one range for each side, so they will be getting all the Whirling Blades tossed to them every single time here. Always important to kind of watch your distance. You probably will be seeing just the Guardian Affinity coming out of stuff to be playing extra safe and how much damage you're seeing on <laughs> 24 tyrannical just full on display right yeah absolutely all of these bosses are going to be scary once we get to them uh, and again i just kind of favor gulch trotter's composition uh, when it comes to dealing with some of the things like the explosive effects that we do have available to us we can talk about more of that later but obviously the uh, mechanics here for him doll are very very simple aside from dealing with the explosives you see them moving into the positions where the breaths have already been because once one breath goes down in that area another breath is not going to happen there in that cycle so at least you can just say that that is a safe zone as long as you can dodge the little cheeky tornadoes. I, I do agree that you know Holy Paladin will be offering you know really quick solutions to be able to deal with the explosive, mm -hmm. but don't count out air to being able to get those quick drain lives, get a quick buff out of, of course, killing any of those explosives. Right, right. Providing you know a nice damage increase going into that. It'll be interesting to see though when they pull you know as big as possible when you're getting multiple ones coming out, how much time he'll be able to have to quickly neutralize a lot of them. That I think will be a little bit more problematic than just a couple of them that you'll see here and there from the boss. And that's the thing, right? That's what I'm kind of airing on the side of. <laughs> no pun intended, is that I feel there are going to be big pulls. We saw that a little bit yesterday, uh, and some of it went awry, some of it did not. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm interested to see. But of course, Himdal here, there's still things you have to be careful of. Of course, the frontal cleave of the boss can always be a little bit problematic. I think we did see one death on a healer yesterday to that kind of thing. Uh, and obviously the big horn, the big, the big AoE uh, that was close to killing people off, like there, but not so much. They know exactly how much health and uh, kind of damage is going to be put out there. Yeah, and one of the big things is just seeing how aggressive you can play. Is you're seeing Arrow and, of course, Retro running with their pride as you're seeing the small shield that are going up onto them, which is why consistently they're actually taking quite a bit less damage here in comparison to Gulch Trotters, which is basically barely surviving a lot of the damage more often than not. A lot of times actually just having Dag in melee to have a little bit of extra damage reduction, probably like 2 to 4% uh, for, for a person will go a pretty long way when you're getting chunked for, you know, about 80 90% of your HP when you're not uh, having any extra defensive uh, legendaries in that. Yep. So it's also just taking the extra risk to be able to have higher DPS if you're knowing that you're always going to be able to survive any of the Horns of Valor going off from him, Dolph. So that's why you're seeing them going out a little bit quicker than Free Marcy here. So he's gone. Chomp is going to move forward here with Travel Form. Likewise, Skylark here with the Sky Step Potion as well. Going to get a big pull going on at the moment. Of course, you do want to eventually grab all of this together, slowly be eventually moving it away from the original location because sometimes you will have those healing runes go down, which are annoying. Don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, some explosives go Go down quite a few because there are so many mobs you can see the knockback there just making sure you're disrupting everything that's going on with this big pack yeah I really love the positioning and getting everybody into the solar beam for as long as possible always important to watch out for those mystic mobs as you're seeing the skull was marked on it on the side of Gulch Strutters and on the side of Free Marcy here the, the mystic mob actually has two different casts one's just gonna be an AoE healing circle as you're seeing on, on Gulch Strutters side the next one is actually gonna be a holy radiance which is just this burst AoE heal that goes out if that gets off it just prolongs the pull for such a long time and we've already seen teams letting the Holy Radiance going off has just utterly destroyed their pulls and made things so much more difficult. I'd like to see as well, just dealing with the Sentinels, not with the huge pack. If you do do that, I mean, we saw that yesterday, it did cause some issues, but obviously that aura that does stop CC will cause a lot of problems if things do go awry. So you definitely don't want that to happen, just kind of getting that line of sight pull around the corner as well on some of these packs, which is important. Yeah, one of the ways that they've done a great job being able to deal with that is actually the Sentinel at the bottom of uh, the hill there for Free Marcy. They actually grab that patrolling Sentinel 
as it's coming up, as they make the larger pull. Mm -hmm. That way, they're actually going to be able to continue, like, make the larger pull, kite down the stairs, grab the Sentinel on your way down, because it already has that great distance between the Sentinel and the rest of the pack that you're pulling. Yeah. Then, like you said, it's not going to be able to give the aura to the rest of the mobs. And I, I like, I don't mind having when you you know you don't really want sentinels with other packs but sentinels with sentinels is kind of okay as much as you know the circles eventually have to um, you know force you to move out and stuff like that so you're losing a little bit of dps but you're still getting some opportunity to aoe sentinels with other sentinels i like it yeah and it always and whenever there is going to be the aoe effect going out you can just drag the other sentinel out as long as you desync them you're going to be able to have some opportunities yep. to dish out a little bit of extra damage so it, really this has been what free marcy uh you know it, it's very rare to see like a dungeon like halls of valor be like someone's forte that they always want to be able to pick. Right. But when it is that first starting dungeon, they always have just shown such strong consistency with it. All right, so I'm going to be getting that Sky Set Potion on the way back as well, pulling around the corner. It's another big pull uh, with some of those Mystics in there. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're just eventually getting them in a position where you can s just group them up, get that Chaos Nova down. Skylark is even just going to start kiting things now. It's not like an Eye of Ashara Skittish. Once he's got some good threat on them to begin things off, he can move away and be completely safe. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is going to go to those Thunder Call and if they're out of range of the tank, they will not be having any of their individual lightning blasts, which deal tons of damage, even if it is uh, in a tyrannical setting. Uh, but also it's going to be the AoE stuns that are going out onto the targets, where you're having to have the melee running out, getting stunned, getting the dispel. And when you have multiple thunder callers going out, not only can it be lethal, but it also can just shut down some of your DPS for four to five seconds with the stun duration being so long. I'm just taking all the packs now past the pack that eventually runs forwards. Uh, you don't really want to have to deal with that pack. It doesn't give percent, right? Uh, so you don't want to have to eventually kill that off but actually even just tanking it here with the first mini boss means that you can just get some good aoe down this isn't that threatening as long as you're in the bubble avoiding so much of that aoe damage around it's not that impactful whilst you're getting all that aoe off on the trash yep and it gives them an opportunity just to start getting some extra cleave damage onto it and they're also probably gonna be waiting for the next storm to be going out on the side of gulch trotters before they pull the next ad coming up you see the storm is probably gonna be happening mm. just a second once the storm goes out they'll be able to pull the sanctify mob a little bit easier and then that ensures that there's going to be a desync between the Sanctify going out and, of course, the Storm coming out. That way you'll be able to, that way you won't have the Storm and the Sanctify coming yep. out and just have nowhere to run. And, uh, you know, only are they enlightened here. You actually, there is a set pattern to how those sanctified little orb things come out. So if you understand that and know it beforehand, you can still be doing some good DPS while this is going on onto him. Of course, they're still working on uh, the first of the mini bosses here. So uh, that's very important. But just kind of the extra little cleave is nice too. Yeah, and you're seeing they're doing a great job making sure they're bringing uh, Oldinger out, making sure they're able to get some good damage onto him while the Sanctify is going to be down. And then being able to have everybody stacked up once again for the Storm to be able to deal with it. Of course, both of these bo boss, er, mini, mini boss abilities are going to empower Hirja in the future, so it's always important to watch out for the left or right side as to empowering her and increasing the damage that each of them do. Hirja is one of my favorite bosses in here. So really? all I have to do is just kind of stand in a certain location and she'll push me over to the other side. Oh, I that's like right. That. Oh, that's right. You're not a healer. Yeah. No, I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> Always going to be very interesting to watch out for as uh, the healers are going to be taking these on because there is such huge damage, and this is one of the few bosses yeah. that has just incredible amounts of uh, one-shot potential mm -hmm. and even combinations of abilities that will be going out. So always going to be important to watch out for you know how Sups and Dagger, respectively, are going to be able to deal with any of the Expel Light, Arcing Light combinations and how well they're going to be able to heal through the storm. All right, so about to take down the few mini bosses. Now, this is so close, actually. <laughs> Looking at how we got the 61% against the 67, uh, Free Marcy should eventually catch up in terms of trash later on here. But Gold Trotter so far has had a good start, and I really did like their composition coming into this first instance. I mean, I was talking to them this morning, and they feel pretty confident that they're going to be able to go all the way. And if they were able to beat Free Marcy here, that would be a little bit of an upset, I think, for some people watching. I think so, especially with the history between the teams. Right. Having to constantly be playing against each other in the same region, you know, there is quite a bit of rivalry going on all the time in the APAC region when everybody is, there's those so few guilds that are so tight together in terms of, uh, you know, their progression, in terms of, you know, their competitive nature here. So you really want to see it as they're going into here. here. Both teams have two battle reses available. All right, so just getting into on the left-hand side here for the Storms to begin things off, and then eventually our tank will position himself to get knocked back all the way to the other side with that beam, uh, forcing Hersha to then run over to the other side, and then you get that sanctifying going down. Uh, and again, set pattern actually on that, so you can technically avoid it, but obviously some big damage can come onto some targets, which you've got to move away from some of your friends from. And you're even seeing subs just getting quickly into bear form there because he actually did get the Expel Light, Arcing Light combination onto him, which can be so deadly. You will see the periodic 
black arcing lights coming out from the boss. Now that you're onto the right side here, uh, here you will gain the Sanctify ability and the Expel lights, which are just the small uh, AOE circles that will be dealing uh, damage to anybody who stands in them, but it'll always be hitting that target. So it's very important as you're transitioning from the Sanctify back to the yeah. Storm side, making sure you're able to top everybody off from any of the Expel lights, which will continue to happen even as the Storm goes out. You know, so you have to make sure you clean up the last of them. Thankfully, Arrow was the last target there. They're able to get everybody back in, get everybody into Effervescence, get everybody topped off here. We're seeing Dag going down really quickly. They are able to get the other battle res off onto them, but this boss could be terrifying here. I was going to say, I, as a healer, what's your biggest worry? Is it the fact that things just get burst down so hard, or is it the duration of a fight like this in Tyrannical setting? It's a bit of both. Uh, I think one of the big things is going to be the combination as you're seeing shape dropping extremely low there. Right after the storm, the yep. boss will always uh, cast one arcing light, and you can always watch target of target to be able to see where it's going to be cast onto. Yep. So at that point, you're going to have as much focus as possible to keep everybody just high enough HP to survive the storm, and then all of your healing is going to be put into one target to top them off before arcing light hits. From there, then you're able to go back to the sanctify side mm -hmm. and have plenty of time to top everybody else back off. So I'm looking at subs, for example, to be holding on a swift mend af for after the storm, and then Dag maybe getting a holy shock back or just getting a quick cast off on a flash to be able to top off whoever is going to be targeted by right. it. Right. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Thanks for the explanation, because, you know, all of these bosses and how they actually interact with one another, very, very interesting. We're seeing now uh, Free Marcy taking a little bit of a lead here in terms of the percentage, not doing too badly for themselves on this boss. But again, remember, there is that little bit of extra trash percentage. You're actually seeing Tech X didn't move his expel light out far enough. He actually did end up hitting Dag in the process here. You're also seeing Suffs going down from the Arcing Light just after the storm. Suffs is doing an excellent job actually proccing the Sefus off of one of the mobs that they skipped initially using his uh, entangling roots. Yeah. Proccing Sefus and being able to top himself off. But it's so dangerous. We've seen it many times with the rest of Druids in the past when they're targeted by the Arcing Light right after the storm. They can use their Swift Men. They can hop into Bear Form. There's so many. They, they have some tools, but the time is so limited as you're seeing Tech going down again. That's right. And that, so they don't have any more battle reses at the moment. So 19% left on this. They definitely don't want to be taking any extra damage. Chompy right next to a Volcanic just moves away slightly there as he's in the mid cast. And you've got to be very, very careful now here. 7% on the other side of Free Marcy. And again, we have to reiterate, Hersha is a very, very dangerous boss. And he's in retro going down there from the Expel Light <laughs> leading up to the storm. And he was actually completely topped off from it. He just didn't yeah. have any defensives left to be able to survive it. They will be able to get it down quickly. But this boss is messy. Yeah, it seems like both teams having a little bit of problems. Free Mars is able to take it, though. Now going to be moving on to the other wing of Halls of Fala here. And even just those explosives being taken down on the other side by Gulch Trotters, trying to just keep themselves alive. Sharp. Oh, jeez. These, these guys... Even when they're completely topped Ooh. off, there's still a very yeah. huge threat that can be going out to them. And how aggressive or defensive that you want to play to it uh, also really makes it a huge difference. You're seeing Gulch Trotters who... Jumpy Himdal was not worrying about, you know, defensive capabilities and, you know, maybe they're in the same position now where, you know, they're not playing as defensive, trying to get more aggressive, but it really can burn you so easily. Uh, those kinds of things could cost them. I mean, it is three deaths to four deaths on either side, so not too much difference overall. And just having one battle res on the side of Free Marcy, though, yep. as opposed to Gulch Trotter consuming all of them, you really won't see the immediate need, I don't think, for Fenrir. But if anything happens, again, keep in mind, the tyrannical bosses, you know, the worst situation, and Gulch Trotter was really in it in previously, where they're getting into boss fights where just losing a DPS or two and they're not able to get everybody back up makes the boss fights drag on for such a long time and increases the danger on them. Breath getting a big pull once again, and actually going to put uh, grabbing everything to as far as he can, really, over towards the portal to eventually Fenrir, and then just going to be into the line of sight spot that you usually do here uh, while everybody else is just going to be AOing things. Even another group up here uh, from Skylark on the other side and uh, making sure that he can get a lot of damage out for his team with that Chaos Nova coming down, locking them in place. Dag, though, going quite low, will continue to heal himself up. Yeah, and he's doing a great job being able to deal with the explosives. He's kind of moving on from one to the other and taking a lot of responsibility for that. It frees up a lot of their DPS uh, who are otherwise not really desiring to be able to go after it so because paladin has so many instant globals to be able to just take it down you know judgment crusader strike holy shock if they really needed to you know to be able to just take a lot of pressure off the dps allow them to just focus on it as uh focus on just dps and the mobs down and focus on perfecting the rotations so they'll be veering right here in fenra's room always spawning over on this right hand side oftentimes you see a one pull of a trash mob uh, just before this taking it to fenra as well sometimes you got to watch out for things like traps etc oh taking one of the bulls okay uh with this 
this as well. A little more uncommon, but uh, it's Free Marcy didn't take on as much trash as Gold Trotters from before. Yeah, and I like the pull coming out of Free Marcy oh. here. Where it, uh, sands the death there that are going out, but they did pop Bloodlust to be able to actually get everything in together, deal with this you know a little bit less favorable mm. trash pull. But it does show that they're kind of getting burned here because Retro actually doesn't have Bloodlust. They popped it, and he, Arrow and uh, Retro just instantly going down so quickly here. So they still have to wait quite a bit of time, but it is showing that it's nice for them to be able to have those batteries available. Uh -oh. I think the bull actually ended up taking Retro out uh, once again here. So at this point, they're just trying to be able to get whatever trash that they can down. They have to actually get Fenrir down to 60% here, but with Wrath already procking Purgatory, the split damage is oh. rising up so much here. Looks like they might just have to drop a pylon and just see what they can do to salvage this. Yeah, they might. I mean, they just got no damage now to kill this, and even if they did stick around tanking this forever and ever, it's going to die so, so slowly. So now at this point, you see there, Sups just positions himself in the front, dies off from that as well. This is a great opportunity now for Gulch Trotters to be able to leap forward, leapfrog forwards, and I'm sorry, Jack, before when you were saying, you know, that was a great position and then both Windwalkers Monk died. Yeah. That's the caster's <laughs> curse. It happens. It oh. <laughs> it really is. You're seeing your stuff's just trying to get away from the, the uh, any of the other mobs there. But losing out on Bloodlust, having that full wipe there is just such a disaster situation yeah. for them. I think it might have just been something of the positioning where the bulls are not expecting where the bull was actually going to end up charging over to. But that a lot of times is where you're going to see, like, Shape, for example, who got the imprison out onto it. You really don't want to have to be able to deal with that, especially when you're watching out for any of the other traps that are going to be going down, any of the other, uh, you know, melee mechanics that they always have to watch out for in a very big pull like that. So just a poor execution there, but yeah. the Strategy, at least, that was something I was a very big a fan of. Gulch Trotters cutting the corner using that uh, walk on the water there to be able to just move past. And it seems like they just want to find a better angle through these wolves, even just going to be caging that one over on the other side. Shape just finding a good path for them to move towards Fenrir and pulling back. Where are they going? Did they accidentally pull some dogs or did they intensely pull dogs? Yeah, in a lot of ways, they want to make sure that they can get at least a little bit of space from yeah. the dogs uh, you know, in terms of positioning, in terms of you know if they need to actually kite backwards or have a little bit extra space mm -hmm. here because you can actually dodge a lot of the leaves coming out from Fenrir here so yep. having a little bit more space for example to be able to just put down a transcendence or just be able to jump out to having a nice spread from the entire group can go a long way in really reducing the damage the group has to take which will allow Dag to funnel out a lot more DPS. Yeah, powering out Fenrir, you not only see like a, almost a four-way split when that jump comes along, right? Well, somebody will usually run down into the cave, uh, and then the other two, three angles that you see on the outside of it, 47% at the moment, but for free, Marcy, this is a little bit of a disaster right now. You know, they come in, uh, arguably the favorites here in this match, and that little wipe that they had against Fenrir's first phase, at least, uh, is really going to cost them. They're hoping that Gulch Trotters has uh, an unfortunate situation here against Fenrir right now. That's really what's going to take here, as you see in Chavi, just taking, uh, you know, the Fenrir's tanking to the face here with Blessing of Sacrifice coming in from Dag to make sure that they're going to be able to easily survive it. And if they get another uh, scent of blood, they're going to be able to just use a Blessing of Protection onto it yep. or uh, another kind of immunity to be able to not have to worry about it at all. So I really like being able to lean on Chavi there to be able to. And I think we'd actually seen it at a Ghost Strutters in the past where, you know, making sure that you have everything prepared, the different CDs in the past mm. can go such a long way here. Free Marcy is taking care of Fenrir's first phase. They're kind of, they're kind of moving on here, but not having Bloodlust is just such a huge burden to them right now. Definitely dealing with the pack mates as well from Fenrir. And even just one thing about the four-way jump that you see the orchestration of the split so well is that not only is it denying just extra kind of melee damage onto a tank because he's spending more time jumping around, but also you're actually doing a little bit more DPS for free whilst he's actually doing that jump around. So again, it's small things here in this race that kind of alleviate some of the risks. Yeah, and with with watching how the well the team is actually able to dodge these ravenous leaps before this leap went out it was only chompy who actually had the bleed on him now that this is actually completed chompy's still the only one who actually has yep. the bleed on him you know there's so much less pressure for the healer and dag just needs to top off the regular split damage that's going to go out there and then from there you're just having to deal with the scent of blood you're able to just use immunities or you're just able to have chompy jump into bear form here and just start spam and healing onto him and then you're all set yep and then from there it's no mount of time do not mount all you have to do is run and then you can head on the way towards those two sentinels as well as what's up top. Now, what's important is, is here is that, uh, I mean, they could use Invis Potions to get past those two Sentinels if they want, unless they already pull them, I can't remember. But regardless of the fact, the, the four Kings up towards the top do provide about 16% in terms of the extra trash. So they know now they've kind of min-maxed things out to know that they don't have to pull anything else beyond what is absolutely required towards the later ends of the dungeon. Yeah, and at this point, they're gonna probably be grabbing one of the brews from the inside the hall, make mm. sure they're able to activate both Kings at once to start with. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that'll really just allow a lot more cleave damage to be going out here. But Bree Marcy, you know, 30% left onto the boss here. They still have, you know, an opportunity and a window to be able to get back into this series because Skovald is not going to be too friendly at all to a lot of these melee guys. And as you're seeing, like you said, just invising past a lot yeah. of the, the Sentinels there, making their lives a lot easier because especially when these, you're having these heavier melee compositions, it just takes such a long time to be able to burn them down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so again, it's just kind of understanding where your strengths lie and how much you can negate the weaknesses of that, and those Sentinels are definitely one of them. I mean, even the two Sentinels that we saw from Free Marcy at the beginning of the dungeon, you could see that, yeah, it's a little bit of a heavier uh, kind of melee composition as well, and they were able to eventually deal with it slowly. Yeah, and one of the big windows I'm looking at is to see where Free Marcy is able to kind of get back into the series. Yep. And I think one of the biggest areas is, while both teams are about to get their battle, they just got it right back now, having one battle res available to them as they're going into Skovald. Looks like Free Marcy should be at least fairly close to being able to get Bloodlust back. Uh, to be able to deal with Skovald. It should be able to take them about three, three and a half minutes to be able to get all of the kings down, maybe a little bit longer, depending on any RP going on. So they should have an opportunity to be able to get a Lust out onto Skovald here. Well, Gulf, Gulf Striders definitively will not have it. Uh, looking more to have it maybe at Odin, uh, depending on their time that's going to be going out to it. So at this point, you know, you're looking at how big of a threat Skovald is going to be towards the melee. Yeah. We've seen Tech going out. We've seen actually just missing the interrupt there onto one of the kings. Just the incredible yell going out to that. At this point, Skylar's just got to drop a uh -oh. pylon and die. Like, this is exactly what... Yeah. Free Marcy needs to be able to get back into this. The longer he takes to die, the bigger a deal it is at the moment for Gulch Trotters and Free Marcy. This is their window. This is their ticket and opportunity to try and get themselves back in. This is crazy. I mean, we saw just the yell going off from the Kings. This is something that should never be happening, no. especially with how you know how many interrupts they have left available to them. Just like you're not expecting, you know, to have the bull rush to be able to take out the melee on the side of Free Marcy here. These little mistakes are just compounding it and just putting it into anybody's game, really. Yeah, I mean, you see, <laughs> they see the they have to start all the way over. Yeah. They actually lose out even a little bit more than that because they don't have the brew to be able to activate the second king again so you're right. not going to get the cleave damage onto it oh no so this is really bad news bears unfortunately for them as they're going to try and go into this and usually what you will see is that the ancestor will pop up they'll try and kite away from that maybe a stun or two uh, as that goes on but a little bit unfortunate here even a, ah, for a demon hunter having to go out that far for the chaos nova to stun that's actually a little bit of extra loss dps here on king tor yeah it just and as you're seeing you're able to see brath picking up the brew there as he's moving on forward here. They have to make sure that they're able to kill this king in order to activate the other ones. This is the usual process that most people will go through. But of course, if you're able to grab the brew, you're able to throw it at one of the kings, which will allow you to attack it early on. and allows it just taking on two targets at once. And they almost had it almost completely dead yeah, before yeah. that interrupt went out. So just they're starting completely fresh, and they don't really have much of a lead, if any, uh, over Free Marcy right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there is the potential as well on shape side that I can't see which legendary is equipped, but Sefu's guy actually does get procced off the Chaos Nova, so maybe he was thinking about that if he has it equipped. But by the by here, usually it's the things like your Radons and your Anger of the Half Giants. So anyway, regardless, a runoff now. Going to be focused down here. More Ancestors just to be kited away from or perhaps stunned. But Free Marcy at the moment. It's interesting, actually. How are they doing with those two that they've actually procced? One of them's getting low, but it looks actually very neck and neck right now, considering that wipe. Yeah, at that point, you know, it does take quite a bit of time to start the RP of, yeah. Yeah, of course, to activate the, uh, the second king here, but they will be able to continue the process quite a bit faster than Gulch Trotters will be. And again, like I was saying, they're definitely going to be having Bloodlust available at some point during Skovald's encounter here if they want to be able to use it there. You know, they have so many opportunities here to make sure they're going to be in a safer position. So this is really what you want to be seeing as Free Marcy tries to get back into the series. I don't know if you know about the Kyle Aris curse from other games, but uh -oh. that's like when 1% happens. And I got a lot of tweets prior when we had that very close game but jack damn it i am hoping for that once again <laughs> it's getting close here so if we see free marcy really ramp up the damage on say like skull vault for example we could come absolutely down to the wire in this game without a doubt here you're seeing brass just making sure he's I mean, moving on towards the next series or next set of kings here going out they're doing a great job making sure they're keeping the distance of course on the ancestors probably gonna be looking at a quick stun coming out of them right there you see the asphyxiate going out always important to watch out for the wicked dagger which will be continue and again all the boss abilities from these kings will roll into the next kings going forward and of course it's always important to watch out for that wicked dagger coming out from one of the kings there yeah. targeting one of the random players and just dealing a huge chunk of damage second time retro has been getting hit by it uh and it's dropping him so low here so it's always very important as the healer to make sure you're just watching who is going to be targeted by it and doing whatever you can to help mitigate that a little bit i love the continuity of the law for the four kings shades of upguard pinnacle as now we go on to god king skullvold one of the best names in world of warcraft <laughs> history i'm not a king i'm not a god i'm a god king 
and he has he's a bit of a notorious little individual of course there's some nice tricks that you can do especially with the ages to be able to kind of time out so that you're actually able to soak up some of his damage right after obviously the uh Ragnarok, right that is as say a big aoe that he's casting and then obviously some of his follow-up abilities yeah, and just, and just as it, Free Marcy is taken down at the last king going out here, Gulf Shriders has a little bit of an advantage here going into the fight a little bit early. They've started the RP event quite a bit earlier than uh, Free Marcy has on this side. But Free Marcy getting Bloodlust back immediately here should take a lot of the threat, a lot of the danger away from this boss fight. And we've seen a number of times where the, having you know the heavy melee, we've seen you know techniques die a couple times to some different uh, mechanics throughout this entire tournament here. You want to be making sure people are really being sharp here because one battle res available, no Bloodlust here. The fight can really start dragging on if multiple people go down. So Aegis goes right as he's about to cast it. So you can soak up all of this damage. And the next cast will come out here from God King Skovold, which is that Fellblaze Rush, and try and soak up that once again as well. Again, just eliminating as many risks as possible. You're going to have to sit on Skovold now as he picks up the Aegis himself and starts channeling it uh, as he's trying to soak up. Well, do, try to do as much damage, and the Flamer's Woes go down. We see a lot of movement from some of the uh, from some of the teams on this boss before, but uh, right now, not so much here. They're doing a great job on the side of uh, you know, Gold Shriders to make sure they're stacking up all of those little flames. Dag was dropping incredibly low there. You really have to watch out. It probably just didn't have his divine protection back yet to be able to just help mitigate some of that damage because you will just take a huge chunk of it before any of it goes out. I'd like to be able to see Dag just preemptively hitting his judgment there, get a little bit of extra damage reduction before any of the uh, charges are going out. But he's also sitting outside of melee here to make sure that he's you know mitigating some of the threat that can go out to shape or to techniques here. And then right after the fell rush goes in, he jumps back into melee to keep on control. DPS. Yeah, definitely. You got to be careful of that. You don't want to be stacked up for that Fellblaze rush. And once again, setting up the Aegis just to be able to soak up. How's Free Marcy doing right now? About 20-ish percent behind. So still kind of close. They're expecting or hoping at least for maybe one death to go down on the side of Gold Trotters, but they still have that one res. So it could mitigate it quite quickly. And then Bloodlust is about to come off cooldown too to catch up with where Free Marcy is. Yep, and they'll both be able to have it going into Odin if they want to be able to use mm -hmm. it for the, for the different uh, buffs that they're going to be receiving there. A lot of times you have, to, you have to be looking at how safely you want to be playing it if you want to be having it for that huge damage buff that Odin's going to give you, or if you're really worried about you know how safe you want to be playing onto a boss like Skoval, which can easily be dropping people extremely low here. Yep. They're doing a great job, and in Free Marcy actually looks like they're not too far off in terms of damage compared to Gulch Trotters here. They've been doing a great job making sure they're watching out for any of the charges here and keeping people safe from those. And A lot of times I'm seeing just the difference in DPS from the healers has also just been a nice point I want to be able to highlight. Yeah. Brath and you know Skylark haven't been too far apart throughout this dungeon, and but whereas Subs has always had just a little bit of an edge over Dag in terms of the extra DPS he can provide and he's also not forced to be able to jump into melee all the time like that to be able to contribute damage. Yeah, and so once again, just kind of finishing up the uh, same rotation of abilities on God King Skovel once again. And Odin's a little bit of an interesting one. Let's just theorycraft for a moment here. With Shape playing Demon Hunter, sometimes, yes, the Demon Hunter legendaries are very well thought out and very kind of concise. You know what you're going to be running. But there's sometimes a case for, say, like the legendary belt that it does damage uh, more damage over 90%. You could, in theory, use it because Odin is so heavily in that phase between the 180 percent uh, but you know it's, it's by the by the other legendaries are phenomenal for demon hunters well, it'd be interesting to see if you're going to be able to have for example the damage buff where you'd be receiving that at if you're going to be receiving it for example closer to uh you know the 80 percent of mark or something like that you'd be you know mm. getting your larger damage increase with bloodlust and not actually being able to take advantage of the legendary there if True. that's the way that they want to go with it all right well god king scoreboard's about to get cleaned up you can see actually that free marcy during all of this time caught up about nine or ten percent which mm. is really good for them to try and kind of steady this still nine deaths on the other side still going down to the wire we're gonna see it as the boss number four falls here on god king score vault 27 53 and then that's gonna be about maybe 20 seconds behind here for free marcy so still very close still very close here to drop down to six percent they're able to just do such a great job to be able to keep you know a lot of the flames under control here gold striders again this is what they're going to be able to need to take the first map and we've seen how important it has been to be able to take the first map in any series really with setting the tone for them as they're going forward here so a lot of it is going to be on the burst damage they're going to be able to do again odin only needs to be dropped just below 80 percent here in order to finish them off that feeling when it was 19 seconds instead of 20 seconds <laughs> damn <laughs> cast a true curse i can't believe it but anyway on to odin uh, and the obviously a few things that you've got to really deal with uh, the ad that gets spawned uh, you kind of want to bring that down uh, as fast as possible because it can be an irritant it can be a nuisance and obviously the swords that raise from the floor and throw out those balls you've got to dodge all of those because they can cause a lot of damage and cause a bit of a nasty side effect overall 
Yeah, and you're always making sure you're watching the positioning as they are, again, heavily focused on melee here, so they will be having to watch out any of the spears coming out of the ground going into them here. Again, they're about 96% or, or so when Free Marcy is starting off the boss fight here, so they will have that little bit of an advantage going into it. It's always very important to make sure they're watching their positioning, dealing with this uh, Stormforge Obliterator as best as they can here. This Obliterator will periodically be casting Surge. Yep. If the cast gets off, it will continue to cast it even faster and just pulsing damage to the entire party. So very important to make sure you're getting on top of it, getting a quick stun or getting a quick kick onto it, making sure you're getting those shut down quickly. Chompy not caring too much about one of those volcanic strikes that hits him because he's midway through cast and he knows there's not any extra damage coming through at that point so he can get away with it. And now let's move over to the runes uh, so that it can get guys empowered and do a bit more damage here to Odin. Uh, and as you were mentioning, you know, when you actually get this, that's when the bloodlust really comes comes in so only could potentially um not two or three percent yeah, yeah it's not it's not exactly the biggest of windows but uh free marcy at the moment still needs to catch up they still need their runes they still need that bloodlust right now they're falling behind it really needs they need someone to die basically on the side of gold shrotters or even twice considering they have the reses yeah what, the big thing to note with the reses here is actually if the wor worst part of the fight is if you actually do end up dying, you don't even get a chance to actually battle res anybody. Mm -hmm. You just get dragged up into the stands bye bye. and get isolated there. So always very important to make sure that you're playing as safely as possible because any death just instantly takes you out of the game here. You are seeing Bloodlust ending as the boss gets to 86% on the side of Gulch Trotters here. A couple seconds left uh, for the side of Free Marcy as they are just dealing with the, ne the newest Obliterator going out right now. Always very important to make sure that they're just doing whatever they can to chunk out just a little bit of extra damage here as the boss is going to be trying or is, is going to finish up at 80% here. The Gulch Riders are just getting really close to finishing out the series. Yeah, it might just finish out this game. It might just look like 3%, but it's not that it's not that small a window considering that that's a big 3% that you have got to take down. I forgot that you die completely, mm -hmm. uh, but there you go. That's how it is. I only ever got taken up to the stands once, so I, I like to. Oh, you're just that so a good success. of a player. You're just like there you oh, go. I never have to worry about there it. There you go. I know that feeling. <laughs> Goldstrider's here, 1% left remaining here to be able to take down Odin, burning down the boss and finishing the fight here. Oof, Founders can do this very well. Could we potentially see a 2-0? We've never seen it bef between these two teams before, and this one could determine BlizzCon for an entire region. Free Marcy here going back to Upper Karazhan, and in many ways a historic moment for them because they were also they also had their backs against the wall in mm. Upper Karazhan in the first MDI where they were facing elimination here. So extremely important for them to be able to win through this game and being able to take it back. Going up against honestly in that reverse sweeper, I seem to remember. Correct. Yeah, very very impactful. And uh, well, it looks like neither team is going to be doing the initial skip that we saw yesterday from our Upper Karazhan. They just want to pull all of this, get the percentage off of it, and less so deal with more bats later on down the line. Personally, I'm a huge fan of dealing with the bats, but at the same time, skipping all of this does require like almost a full team wipe, so um, you kind of get away with saving those 20 seconds or 25 seconds. Important to get away with what you can here as we're going into this. It's always very important as you be able to engage with any of yeah. the uh, mobs who are going to be buffing you here. You're going to have the nullifier going out. I really like being able to see Brath, what he was doing just there to make sure that they're, he's running away, actually trading off on, on aggro for the nullifier here so that he's not going to be able to receive the buff. You're just having the monks taunting it instead. He grabs all of the adds instead, guaranteeing that the nullifier is going to buff one of the DPSers. Then he's able to get all of the extra mobs inside, allow you just to pump out huge damage. You're just seeing Retro receiving that buff, being able to just destroy all of these mobs here makes a tremendous difference in being able to clean that room yeah. quickly and easily. Yeah, definitely, especially when you just want to get into Curator, get that down, be able to move through all the portal as well. Uh, on the other side here for Gold Shrodders, it's not quite going as cleanly or smoothly uh, in terms of the percentage gained at that kind of rapid speed. For Free Marcy, yes, they lost two people during this, and actually, oh, and Skylark goes down, needs to get the res up there to keep this going, because if you leave this, if you let this go, then that's huge amounts of damage that you have to do once again. But also, the positioning has actually been kind of poor on the side of uh, Ghost Riders here. Dag was actually receiving the Nullifier buff. Important to note, the Nullifier buff gives you extra healing and damage yep. at such a considerable level that the, D the DPS should be the only ones ever receiving it. And the best way to actually bait that out is to ensure that Brath and Subs or uh, Skylark and Dag are always going to be line of to the Nullifier before the cast even begins here. That'll allow the Nullifier to only choose of available targets, mm. the DPS, and allow them just to run it over as quickly as possible here. So you would have been able to like to see that buff going out onto the DPSers ahead of time and you're you are able to have it for such a long duration I believe it's 30 seconds so you can actually yep. carry it into the boss fight
right, as it looks like Arrow and Retro were doing by judging by their damage. Dancing Room open up for Skylark now, so he can get plenty of stacks of his Marrow in very easily, even if he wants to use anything like Blood Boil, he's going to be able to get his Skull Flowers Hemiostasis, really racking up all that little bits of extra damage that he would like to, because obviously it's going to pop three times as opposed to the one, uh, and that really, really does help out. Just those little bits of extra damage. And I like the kiting path right now. If they kite it down towards the end of the hall, that means they can easily jump through the portal very fast. A lot of times you'll see groups that actually end up making a line pattern, even if they're going to be going yeah, towards yeah. the right location that they want to, often end up actually closing the door on their DPSers to quickly uh, you know, get anything onto them when, of course, the uh, Evocate actually goes out. So making these pocket strategies goes a very long way to being able to actually neutralize this boss when you get into the Evocate phase here. So they pop Bloodlust early here, right before the Evocate is going to go out, and make sure that they're going to be able to just completely shut down this boss here. And a lot of times you are seeing maybe they're going to get one more uh, puddle coming out mm -hmm. right before the Evocate. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But by making this pocket strategy, you're always able to account for it and counter it by making sure your DPS doesn't have to be uh, standing, standing any of the lightning to be able to deal with it or have it taking any extra risks there. That's right. That quaking actually hit pretty hard there as right. it was coming out of the Evocation, but they're all okay. Get nice and healed up. Curator about to die off on the side of Free Marcy, moving over towards the portal. Very important. Instantaneously on the way through that, and we're going to see those Volatile Energies die on the side here of Gulch Trotters, who are now going to start repositioning uh, as they want to move down that hallway nice and fast. Yeah, and they're doing a great job being able to actually just focus their damage on the side of Free Marcy. You are seeing air going down. Not too bad because the respawn is just right around the corner here. They are going to end up pulling the Pyromancer along with a couple of the bats here. You have a couple options in terms of what, which mobs you want to be dealing with here. So you're taking on this Pyromancer. Always important to note that the fell orbs that are just spawning down there are being soaked by the tank. If they do end up detonating, they will just completely obliterate the yep. So very important to make sure you're watching out for that. And of course, the fell bats will have their frontal that deals considerable amount of damage. So Brat's kind of kiting around, trying to drop his necrotic stacks here. He does get hit as well as subs getting hit by that breath because he actually had to move around the group in order to be able to drop his stacks cleanly and efficiently. So everybody dropping ridiculously low. Subs just doing whatever he can to try to top everybody off. Brass needs another second to be able to get his necrotic off, but he wasn't able to in time here. So a little bit of miscommunication and maybe just, uh, you know, mistakes in terms of how they are going to be kiting this dungeon. Well, this is a big deal, Jack, because six deaths right now compared to the one. Whilst they, yes, they were a little bit ahead, uh, but those 30, 25 seconds even could be a big difference later on down the line, especially since this is an instance that's so mapped out. This is one that is so well calculated by a lot of these teams. Going to be skipping that guy right in front of Medivh, going over towards Shade now. Uh, and Arrow is still dead. I think uh, actually what he ended up doing was uh, putting a paralysis out on to uh, the blade lord to make sure that he's able to run by, making sure he's the only one who ends up running by, so he's right. the only one who receives aggro from it. Then the rest of his team can run by because they, otherwise they don't have the opportunity to be able to have like a sap effect on right. it from the composition. There. I missed it. I missed it. So I was looking at the side of Gold Trotters, and now they're going to be working on Shade of Medivh. You just want to be able to interrupt those frostbites so nobody gets frozen. Uh, if you can interrupt bolts, that's nice, but not exactly fully required on somebody like, say, for example, if it's hugging Chompy, he can easily kind of blink out of that, dodge it. Uh, that one's going to go through on Dag, knowing that they don't have the interrupt. Likewise, one potentially going out on Tech, uh, and overall, because he was able to roll out and get pre-positioned for it just in case. Yeah, and in a lot of ways, you're looking at how well everybody is able to be able to dodge. Yeah. You're able to see Suffs, for example, use Displacer. Uh, Chompy's able to have a Disengage or Displacer, whichever he prefers to choose. Uh, it'll be a little bit tougher on the side of Dag, having to use his uh, Cavalier to be able to make sure he's running away from it at the last second, but he is able to have that opportunity there. But at this time, again, the in Guardian's images are all the order from the is normalized, so it always starts with Guardian's image here. You want to be seeing just the target focus and how well they're going to be able to approach it, because again, fortified birds are dealing tons of damage. So you are seeing on both sides, they're making sure they're focusing down one at a time with their melee, making sure that they're rotating through their interrupts, completely shutting one bird down at a time here, doing a great job, and then you're having your Warlock or maybe even your Boomkin just starting onto the other one, getting dots up and starting that little cleave damage, that way it'll be much easier to drop it low. So Gold Shrouders Free Marcy looking pretty even here dealing with the first phase. Yep, so all those fall and um, on the way back to Shade of Medivh now as he re kind of uh, mashes together and dealing with him. Same uh, mechanics once again. Chompy, will he reposition? Yes, he does. Nicely done. Uh, spreading themselves out for that quaking as it goes off. And next phase is going to be the frosty phase, I believe. Uh, so just kind of, oh, actually, no, is it the flame wreath? I think it might be the flame wreath, actually. Let's find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it's flame wreath. And then it's frost at the very end uh, where we see people having to be moving around. But flame wreath is definitely nothing to be kind of sniffed at. It's very, very dangerous. 
Yeah, it's always important to note you know, the pressure that gets put onto the healers here and whatever tools that they're going to have access to. You know, a lot of ways you do want to be able to, on the side of the Holy Paladin to not end up being the target of the Flame Wreath. You want to be able to actually put your hand of sacrifice onto another player. So you're seeing Techniques and Chompy receiving it. You'd be looking at to see one of the targets. Looks like it is Technique receiving Blessing of Sacrifice from Dag here. Yeah. Very scary situation as you're having Quaking going off during the Flame Wreath. Chompy dropping incredibly low. You might want to see him dropping the bear form, hit, hitting his frenzied regen. Just sitting in the bear form here. He does get a big shield. It might end up being the Fell Shield emitter coming in from Dag here. Cool. Barely getting through that phase. And great control there by Dag. There is no extra benefit from Chompy ending that phase at 100% HP or yeah. that 9% HP. Well, one's going to help you sleep at night a lot better. <laughs> it shows incredible control there of knowing how much focus he needs to put onto it and keeping a sharp eye onto the debuffs there. And at the end, what he did was he just put on the Fell Shield emitter for the last couple seconds yep. of that Flame Wreath debuff onto Chompy as he sat in bear form there. Absolutely, because it's not just a case of if you cross the line from the Flame Wreath, then you're going to end up dying. But it's also if somebody dies in that Flame Wreath, it's going to explode anyway and kill everybody. So you definitely do not want people dying in those moments so now we fall down now we relax down oh I, I, we're, we're relaxing right now chill out for a moment <laughs> i'm sure all the healers are relaxing right now as well the intermission <laughs> there you go that's right <laughs> and coming down from you know what is a very difficult boss fight uh you know even on the 24th uh -huh. level there it, it shows the control and it shows you know that how well the team has practiced because they do have all those tools to not be hit for example by the flame bolts and it really sets the healers off really when you have yeah. to be focused healing that so hard so at this point they're doing a great job they're moving on both sides to mana devour and at fairly equal levels here Thank you very much as well, our observers, for showing Medivh's Tome of Betrayal, you know. I like as it when they see the steamy, steamy romance novels. I know, I, you know, and we had uh, Sloop telling me about that last time <laughs> we were here yesterday, so I think it is you actually involved in that. I, I can neither confirm nor deny. Oh, okay, okay. Tell us about Mana Devour. Oh, sure, absolutely. So they're going to be tanking him towards the corner, very important, so you can eliminate some of the space that all of the mechanics are going to go down on. I do appreciate the rat uh, mount as well, of course. Uh, as um, you know, th he's going to be throwing down some orbs, which are very important that you actually have to eventually kind of soak up and deal with. You do not want them reaching the Mana Devour. If you do, big explosions occur. Yeah, and being able to actually soak up all of those uh, orbs that are going out from it, we're having the Quin Rat on your seat on the side of Dag makes it much easier to be able to soak those up here so first you usually will end up seeing skylark using his ams which is a much lower cooldown than yeah. divine shield soaking up one of the first uh sets of orbs that are going to come out here if they really need to they're going to be able to lean on say you know uh, you know, maybe Chompy or anybody else who's able to have defenses right. or immunities to soak up a couple of the orbs on the outside of the room and then so going into one of the purple tornadoes there to be able to drop their stacks. Yep. But if you're just holding on to one of the orbs, you will be able to receive a quite a large damage, in or actually about 5 or 10% damage increase per stack. So you're seeing techniques actually picking up one, immediately going to drop it off because it can be quite lethal. Skylark actually picked up quite a bit of stacks and does proc his purgatory as he tries to remove the rest of them. Uh, so you're seeing just the tornado shrinking greatly in size here. If you're looking at Dag, I actually believe has been unseated from his Quinrat there. We will just be jumping under the boss with Divine Shield up to start soaking these. And Skylark did actually already proc his Purgatory during this, so he technically did die, but he's kept himself alive. And I mentioned it yesterday, I'm going to mention it again. And um, We can't see the legendary, so I don't know what these D uh, DKs are running, but I do like Arceus Drape to be able to just pop AMS, gives you a little bit of longer time, go around, soak all the orbs, and then that actually provides you a bit of healing as well uh, while that's going on. You can do a fair amount, but of course, as you said, you know that damage buff can help out some of the DPS so maybe leaving uh, one or two can certainly help too there and eventually this is going to go down it's not that threatening here on this fortified setting as the big mana devourer yeah man the interesting trade-off that you have to look at is while they will receive that damage buff you yeah. have to look at how much extra damage the healer themselves will do if they don't actually have to babysit you i mean maybe it's one thing if you're going to say that you're going to you know double rejuve one of the players and be able to deal with it there but it's another thing entirely if it's going to require a greater focus here. So big pull coming in by Free Marcy. Here we go. Here's one of the big moments in this dungeon. And, well, they're grouping everything together. They do not want any deaths going down. They definitely don't want any big stacks of Necrotic going down on, say, Brath, for example. That's why we're seeing both DKs being able to kite away. Good control at the moment. Big damage coming out from Shape on the right-hand side here. With the I-Beam, Chompy goes down, though. And that is going to cost a little bit of time here with that one death going down. They get him straight back up, though, uh, as he respawns at that checkpoint anyway. And uh, it looks like they're going to be able to deal with these devourers nicely one of the big threats that you have to deal with here is how well you're going to be able to gain distance away from these mobs while still dealing a little bit of your own here yeah you know skylark did a great job being able to get out quickly but the mobs actually didn't end up following him fast enough so when all the orbs spewed out from any of the any of the mana devour minis they weren't actually able to keep on moving and chasing after skylark mm -hmm. so having that large impact taking dag and chompy down really just shows that while you are having a great setup and a great pull you need to make sure that you're also having the mobs going where you want them to go as quickly as possible to make sure that they're dodging their own orbs that they place down. Alright, so using his uh, 
worth walk there uh, to just try and get fast as fast as possible here with these invis potions too 92 percent against the 89 percent we're probably going to see uh, a lot of focus here onto bats maybe after the king or does the king actually give percent the king actually does give percent here it's it looks enough. like free marcy is going to be ne needing to kill one bat whereas mm. gulch trotter should be all set here yeah. so big focus again onto the knights because they are so deadly as you're seeing subs and retro going down then the knights land onto another location they do put out an AOE burst damage, so Sucks and Retro going down. It's extremely difficult to be able to battle res people onto this chessboard due to line of sight issues going out here. So this is kind of a disastrous situation yeah. because they're not able to actually run back because they just use their invisibility potions, right? So at this point, this is so scary for them because they aren't able to really battle res anybody. They're not able to res techniques on the side of Gulf Trotters here, but also for Free Marcy, they need to be able to get them up very rapidly. That way that Sucks is able to start the RP event and they're gonna be able to kill that one extra bat that be, they'll be waiting on. I mean, you stole the words right out of my mouth, Jack, because right now this is very scary for Free Marcy. I mean, they are nine deaths against the four. With Glow, Glow Shot is just able to keep it up. Prath almost died there. Purgatory's already procced. Very, very close. If that happens, that's an utter disaster, and that would be their tournament life done. But they're still trying to keep up at the moment. Uh, at the same time here, Glow Shot is not doing too bad against the king. Uh, you can see that the king on the side of Free Marcy is nowhere close to death, whereas a little bit more here for Glow Shot. So they're avoiding this AoE nicely and just focusing on the king right now yeah i'm interested to see uh, technique technique actually seems to have released there if he's going to be able to run back i'm not sure if he's going to be able to try to paralyze the mobs or something find some way to kind of drop combat to be able to rejoin with the group yeah or if they were able to actually get the battle res off onto them if they were just standing directly onto his location usually you can uh, get some kind of opportunity there but it always depends on that situation but dead again point, yeah, going down again, <laughs> and uh, Free Marcy really just has to do whatever they can. They actually have to kill so many mobs to be able to actually get the king down to that about 30% mark where he will no longer actually put up his shield here. So there's Free Marcy here having to work on the queen. Yep, uh, so now just taking a uh, damage onto the king once again here for Gulch Trotters and right now I mean Tech, Tech doesn't want to be doing more things like that because that just cost him an extra five seconds couldn't probably get past where the original position that he was in uh, really causing some problems there but they do have the lead right now Free Marcy needs to find a little bit of room to catch up try and put pressure onto this king but they have so little damage to do this and you know, anybody who takes any extra damage compared to like Brath for example who can really kind of sustain two things would be uh, another catastrophe yeah, at this point, they're just kind of relying on Blood Decay Leech to be able to top yeah. them off from any quaking damage here. Always important to make sure they're watching out for that. But at, at that point, it was just early execution, and that's always the deadliest part of the you know the chess event is going to be the very beginning of it. So yep. at this point, Gulch Striders is getting the king down. They're able to move forward. And th at that point, I believe they just need that 1% here. So they probably are at like 99.5 or something. So they're going to go get back, kill one of the bats here as Chompy starts up that RP event and is able to run back and rejoin the team and helping them out. All right, so yeah, getting on towards those bats, and that will be done. And oh, Gold Shotters right now has a wave of momentum behind them. If they can just keep this up and not actually fall on Visit Doom, because that's the one moment where everything could go awry here. Free Marcy now going on towards the bats and trying to kill those off, and then we'll be moving forward to try and catch up. Yeah, at this point, they're just taking down the double bats here. Important to make sure you get the taunt off onto them quickly. Just taunt one, grip the other, getting them in together. And again, we've seen this in the past, making sure that they're getting, you know, the breast focused away from the group. You, this isn't too much time lost because you're going to see Gulch Trotters just kind of waiting at the door here for a little bit of time here. Uh, Free Marcy might actually have to wait at the door even still after killing them. So there's not too much time lost in this vein. But you see Gulch Trotters is able to start the boss just a little bit earlier. They have everybody up. They have Bloodlust at the ready to be able to push this few things to watch out of course for Fizz of Doom as that burning blast is going to be focusing on towards a tanker you can actually interrupt that it's not too bad at all uh, and likewise though barrage is something that you got to be considerate of uh, not only this beam which will focus one member looks like it's focusing on to tech there to start things off so but he's trying to kite it around and make sure that he can get as much damage done while actually being focused by that beam and also the purple orbs don't want to get hit by those very important to watch out for the purple orbs they will affect one target on this first platform here two on the next and three in the following there always important important to make sure that the target is standing still when you end up dispelling them because the orbs will either spawn uh, whenever you dispel them or when the effect runs out so ideally you want to be able to get off them as quickly as possible there so they reduce the damage that they take if you actually end up do hitting any of the orbs they do proc an explosion which deals even more damage to anybody around you so at this point making sure that they're standing still getting the dispel off onto them and then being able to quickly dodge past it as uh, the Gulch Trotter is sitting pretty going on to the, the first of the platform 63% against 68% right now here free Marcy trying to catch up but important thing 
thing is four deaths on their side means that if this pace keeps up, Goldstrot is, is going to take the 2-0. Now, once again, Goldstrot is here trying to move across this, sticking to the sides, knowing that that beam is going to knock them back heavily if they are actually hit by it in the middle of this. Now they get towards him and get that interrupt and start pushing the power. Yep, important to know that the first target that's going to be able to move onto the center area of this Doom's platform will then stop, of course, yeah. disintegrate cast going out, and it will just allow uh, the free passage for everybody else who may be a little bit slower there. So Gulf Strider's having a sizable advantage here. They do pop Bloodlust onto this first ship, the second platform going into it. They want to make sure they push him as fast as possible here and make sure they're avoiding any of the chaotic Novas that are going to come out, any of the purple orbs that are going to come out from that area. So even though they are losing a little bit of Bloodlust here, timing here, they are playing a little bit of a safer strategy in order to actually make sure they get through this. Yeah, with those purple orbs, Techmonk had it and then he was flying through the air and it just gets popped there and it's not really that impactful at all. So now on towards the final ship. Can can Gultschrotters get the 2-0 here against Free Marcy? Because right now, Free Marcy, not in the best of situations whatsoever. They're hoping for more deaths on the side of Gultschrotters. But with Fortified here, I don't think Gultschrotters is going to drop the ball. They look to be strong. They look to be patient. And they are pumping out the DPS here to finish off the ads and then move on to Visit Doom. Uh, their only saving grace right now for Free Marcy is going to be able to have some incredible bloodlust time. But it's going to be so difficult when Gultschrotters is already at 13% here onto the boss and dropping faster, right? They're not even going to be able to get to the boss in time before. 5% on the side of Gulch Trotters here. Gulch Trotters with a very decisive oh. and very clean uh, upper Karazhan run as they're just all you have to deal with is just healing through the last of these orbs. Make sure they dodge the last of it. You are seeing Dag going down. Shape going down. Oh. Skylark propping purgatory. 1% oh. left onto it with Gulch Trotters. They just need to make that's sure they it. get it down. But that's that it. That was close towards the end, and Gold Strutters with a fantastic upset. It does not matter how sloppy the last few seconds were. They got it done when it matters the most. They are going to be going straight to BlizzCon to represent the APAC region. And on top of that, they finally got the best against their counterpart in the region when it mattered the most. Trekkie, before we even jumped into this one, you said, look, it's the matchup that we've seen three times in the very limited history that we have in the MDI, and Free Marcy comes out on top pretty much every time, every single time, two to one, and now the 2-0 when it matters the most to determine BlizzCon. Let's talk about the counter pick, though. Yeah, I'm not really that sure about Upper Karasen being a good pick for them in this tournament. It made sense before when we here with Dag from Gold Strutters. And so first, I want to say congratulations. After falling to the lower bracket yesterday, how does it feel earning this third spot at BlizzCon? It was amazing. We were so down after yesterday. We knew we had to play really well to have a chance, and we did that today. So I'm really and so after that loss, you said it was really hard and you, you're feeling down. So how did you guys uh, recompose yourselves to claim this 2-0 victory here? We just had to calm everyone down, calm the nerves, make sure everyone was on the same level, playing well. Yep. All right, well, thank you so much. Congratulations once again. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you very much. And you said something very important there, Sowers. That is the third of 